A uh, very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and this is the Power Talk Show. Now before we took our very short break, we were having a conversation about women in <coughs> leadership positions. Women have been occupying these spaces in the past few years and we want to, to see what do we think about the future. There has been a talk that the future is female. Can we foresee that? Do we think it's actually something that we can achieve in our country? And the question we're asking on our social media platforms is, what are the differences that you've noticed between male and female leadership? We want to understand what are the, the, the leadership styles that you've noticed that are different between these two genders. So go on our social media platforms at Y254, share your opinions, let us know. Maybe if you had an experience, you can share that with us and we will sample that as we progress. And I am being joined live on set by uh, Honorable Brenda and Wendy Aura. So before we went on our break, we were just talking about the, the progress we've noticed. Mm -hmm. Since the, the feminist movement in the past few decades, we've noticed very significant changes in terms of women taking up more spaces and being uh, given more roles and being uh, allowed to express their, their expertise and their skills. But women are still being fought in these positions. To me, we are not being led to lead. Uh, you know, there's still that follow up of let's micromanage let's see she's not as efficient she's not doing this and recently mm. we've seen a uh, uh, career honorable mm. career who was facing her third time of uh, impeachment and why why is she being fought like that because uh, honorable brenda you are a representative of the, of the odm a mm -hmm. uh, women's league in meru county yeah. my question is mm -hmm. the the allegations against her are incompetence, corruption, but these are some of the things that we still see in leadership even up to the presidential position. We have seen uh, past presidents and past governments and all these things. They've been accused of the same things, but why is she being fought so much by the, the people in the county? Um, first thing first, what I can say is that um, for Her Excellency Governor Kawira Mwangaza in Meru County, uh, she's not being fought by the people in the background. Mm. She's being fought by the MCS, the, member, the members of county assembly. Yeah. And uh, what I can say is, um, I think there's no tangible reason to impeach the governor. And this is because the, when, you, when you tend to look at the key reasons and the key aspects as to why they're trying to impeach her, they are still the same same reasons repeated over and time again. Yeah. Every time the matter, uh, every time the matter is um, placed on the table in the Senate. So basically, I just think um, it's just all about gender biasness yeah. and uh, stereotypes in whichever dimension, because there is no tangible reason or evidence as to why she's being impeached or rather treated in such a manner. Yeah, because yeah. I, I'm aware she went to court mm -hmm. uh, to file a case against yes. the same same allegations being used as yeah. an excuse mm -hmm. to to impeach different people, and we've seen this this across the board. We've mm -hmm. seen uh, previously we had uh, Waiguru who was yeah. being uh, fought. Mm. for some allegations when mm. recently Soi Pantuyo was nominated for a CS position yes. there were accusations against her about how she got the position mm. so women have been facing a lot of this accusation mm. whereas the male counterparts where we may know this person has actively participated in corruption and we have mm. the evidence mm. there's no war against them there's no friction there's no question even about yes. their competence as a leader yeah. why are the women being fought wendy why are the women yeah. being fought in leadership okay just to weigh in on the meru county issue and i don't come from meru county but what i know about that county it's very patriarchal yeah, mm. I also have a friend who vied as an MCA and she had a very bad experience after being nominated as a MC in that county. Yeah. And even from the way, uh, you, you know, I can tell about how you are from the way you speak, how you talk, how you, a, a lot of things. You don't, I don't have to be one of you, but I can tell about you. So we are also in the, the forums that we are in, the WhatsApp groups, the way they speak, you can just tell that, because we've had even clips from Mary County, them talking about uh, women in leadership, and specifically their governor. And 
I feel like uh, it's a very unfortunate situation. And to make it worse, she was a governor from an independent party. Mm -hmm. No, she didn't go through the party, an independent uh, candidate. So uh, for me, I feel that they need to let her work because she cannot deliver if the MCAs are always on her neck. Because at county level, the MCAs play a very serious role in terms of even for the resources to reach the people. It has to pass through the MCAs, they have to pass, pass the bills, the budgets has to go through the MCAs. So I'm just trying to imagine what she's going through with opposition in a function that's supposed to support her governorship. But I hope that uh, she remains strong because these are ch the challenges that we anticipate as women and even maybe uh, mentor more more women in that uh, in that county, so that in future we may have a strong voice to 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 fight to for the women issues. Yeah. yeah, and Africa in general is a very patriarchal continent. African men are very strong about wanting to be in leadership, and you know sometimes they even ignore the opinions mm. of women. Mm. We face that even sometimes in workspaces where you you voice an opinion and you're disregarded, and a male counterpart is maybe listened to over you. Mm -hmm. Recently there's been some changes with even the, the turn in the generations and more education and thank God for the internet as well because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. now we are more informed, we mm -hmm. have information. Mm -hmm. So there is a shift but we have an older generation that's still fixed on their ways and mm -hmm. there's a saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So it's very hard to get the older generation to accept that Times are changing and mm. women have voices. Mm. Sometimes they have more important things to say than the male counterparts. How can we get to that point where we educate the, the older generations to accept? Because I know the younger generations are more accepting of women in leadership positions because mm. in most spaces, even here in studio, I see more women in technical mm. roles where mm. traditionally it was men who are taking up the cameras and you know doing all this heavy lifting mm. but now women are being given that opportunity and it's something that is very wonderful because the future is brighter mm. but how can we get the older generation to come to where we are at and to get them to understand that a woman's voice is something that's very very important and you need to empower your children you need to empower your daughters so that they can be able to speak up mm. so that Tataki says come a femicide we can sort of yeah. get get rid of them gbv yeah. cases mm -hmm. we can eradicate them in to some extent mm -hmm. if we empower the women so how can we how, how can we reconcile the two do you have any opinion on that uh brenda yes 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 and i think um in our society uh the main issue or rather the main challenges that faces uh women when it comes to governance and leadership uh we can say um as uh, it's patriarchal, like uh, first of all, they, uh, the many people in the society they don't believe that a woman can lead. Yeah, like uh, for example, in Meru, as you, as, as you had mentioned, in Meru, when you tend to look at some clips uh, by Honorable Senator Kithure, mm -hmm. no, 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 not Murungi, sorry, not Kithure mm -hmm. Kindike, Murungi, sorry, the senator, the current senator. So apparently, when you, when you look at such clips, which were played in the Senate some time back, during the second uh, impeachment of Honorable, of Ahang Zelensi Kawira Mwangaza, such clips were very much devastating to womanhood because uh, they were actually offensive sexually and um, they were they were de they were demeaning they mm -hmm. were very much demeaning and so basically what I can say um, what we can do um, we should train we should train our daughters and our um, girls that all this all this notion can change and it can change through them yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think at our, on that, mm -hmm. we can also, we should rather also train our sons mm -hmm. to respect women, mm -hmm. yes. to, you know, value the opinions of the women. Yeah. Because I think when you, when you educate a young child from mm -hmm. a very early age, mm -hmm. then the impact will, will, will stay with them, the, the lessons mm -hmm. will stay with them. Yeah. Just and to weigh on that, mm -hmm. uh, w one way we can bring in the older generation is to have intergenerational dialogue. It's important that when we are talking about leadership, let's have the seasoned people, the older people, and then the young people. And nowadays, it's a good thing that 
they've realized that the Gen Zs have a voice, uh, yeah. the young people have something to to actually bring to the table. So um, it's important to now have uh, conversations with inclusive of both generations so that they may understand the reasoning of both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, another thing on that note, fortunately for the Gen Z movement recently, mm. the youth were respected as a voice. Yeah. And sometimes it's unfortunate that something so extreme has to happen for mm. people to realize we mm. need to make a change. Yeah. Something has to, there has to be something radical mm. for people to realize, oh my God, our system has been failing these people mm. and we need to amend some things. Mm. So hopefully in future it's going to be better. People will just mm. understand this is an old system. We need to make a shift mm. so that we can be all inclusive. Mm. But another thing you brought about is the fact that women are being attacked, mm. sexually degraded. Mm. Women are being attacked for the... I don't know. I don't know if mm. I should call it the weirdest <laughs> reason. <laughs> Sometimes the craziest <laughs> reason. Mm. I never hear men being talked about based mm. on their sexual history. Yeah. But when a woman is brought about, they're like, no, we have to look at this one. She has done this. She has done that. And sometimes mm. it's just pure allegations. Yeah. Instead of looking at my papers, my experience, mm. what I bring to the table and what I can offer, they look at the other stuff that does not really matter. Mm. And therefore, women have to have have thick skin mm -hmm. we have to be stronger we have to be braver we have to bad you know girls. yeah we have to be <laughs> bad girls <laughs> for us to survive in this day and time yeah how mm. how do you manage that Brenda how mm. do you manage that particularly as a woman in uh, the country that you're talking about that's very predominantly par patriarchal and you know with the with the bias that is there mm -hmm. how do you get through day by day how going through your, your duties and ensuring that you do not focus on this other noise? Um, what you do first, uh, or rather, what you need to ensure is that you have to have some thick skin and you don't have to listen or rather um, give consideration to the negativity or rather the negative comments from the people or rather the negative-minded people. We just need to concentrate and focus because you know you're there to work for yourself, work for the people, deliver to the people and serve the community as a whole. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You have to focus on what brought you to that position. Yes. I really love that because mm -hmm. you know sometimes all this other background noise is mm -hmm. meant to distract you from what you're meant to do. Yes. Yeah. And another thing that sometimes women have been finding challenging mm -hmm. is balancing work and home life. Mm -hmm. If you have a family, mm -hmm. I have young kids running around and then mm -hmm. I have to go to the office and run an entire company. Mm -hmm. How can I balance that? Wendy, do you have a formula for that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a mom than myself and uh, there's no formula. I don't think there's a formula. It's more about um, just understanding how to give 100% uh, at different times, like having time for everything. Because mm. now uh, you have to put boundaries when it is time for work, it is work. When it is time for family, you don't let work uh, pass the boundary. And then also just spending quality time with family, because family comes first before anything, before politics, before... Uh, before politics, before career, families will always remain family. So it's more about uh, just try to also find a supportive person who can, a supportive person in your life who can support you. Uh, it can be a, your spouse, your sister uh, that understands you and supports you. Yeah. Because uh, I must say it's not easy, especially motherhood and uh, career workplace and all that because you want to be the best in all levels yeah. but also at the same time looking at your mental health it's very important because it can be draining trying to catch the two buses but yeah uh, just looking out for yourself and also family it's doable it's doable i love that yeah and honorable brenda i can imagine mm. with your schedule it mm. must be crazy mm. how do you make time for your personal life um, let me, uh, what, what I can say is that, um, uh, leadership to me, it's like a calling. Yeah. So basically, um, I have to ensure that there's time for my official duties, time for my personal duties, time for my career and everything, time to spend with family. And so, yeah, it could be crazy, but at least I am trying to balance 
though what I can say is that women ne needs to be respected yeah. because that proves that uh, they strength in me, they strength in men in leadership, and they, and they strength in every detail that a, a detail that a woman is taking in the society. Yeah. So women basically should be respected because it's not easy. It's not easy to be in, in the in the leadership space. Um, due to the stereotypes and the insults, the, I mean, everything is just draining, literally. Yeah. But um, it takes one a strong heart, a thick skin, and everything that it can, um, everything that it can be, it can be said to be something uh, maybe that can lead maybe to uh, something that is impactful to the society. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I really love that because mm. genuinely mm -hmm. people think being a mother sometimes is easy. They do not understand <laughs> how demanding it can be. It, 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 it is takes one to be strong. You be need that. It looks yeah. like a career on its own. Yeah. It is a full <laughs> career. I genuinely believe that because even yeah. when uh, sometimes I have younger cousins who come mm. over. Kuchunga tu watoto siku moja. Guys, your mom? Just mm. go home. Please just leave. Mm, yeah. So as a mother, when this mm. is your child, mm. it's first a full-time career. Mm. Second, you're a wife. Mm. It's another full-time career. Mm. Then you're a career woman. Mm. Perhaps you're pursuing your education. Mm. You're juggling all these different roles. Mm. And people do not understand the strength it mm. takes to be able to manage mm. all of that, to mm. wear all those hats and deliver at 100% mm. in all these roles. Mm. And another thing is prioritizing our mental health. We've been having mm. this conversation about uh, mental health, how it's important to, to focus on our mental health. It's important for us to put our mental health first so that we can deliver on all these other fronts. But how do we do that? Mm. Especially when you're an adult, you've grown, you have all these different responsibilities. Mm. It then becomes a bit difficult for you to create time sometimes, mm -hmm. for you to, you know, just take a break mm. from the family, from, from the office, from everything. <laughs> so how can you create mm. time for your mental health to ensure that it's in check and mm. you're delivering across all fronts? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think from experience, it's um, I, I I feel like mothers have some special grace in them, mm. because uh, now the way you've said juggling uh, uh, with so many things at the same time, but motherhood also comes so differently, and you've seen uh, women go into depression because of motherhood. Those who've had paternal depression, so um, it may be crazy and. Uh, first of all, you have to love yourself, love yourself first, and just taking a day at a time, because now you can't do everything uh, yourself. You need to ask for help when you need. Yeah. You also need to understand that um, we have limitations as a human being, so asking for help is not a sign of um, a weakness or something. Yeah. yeah, but also guarding your mental health is very important. You need yeah. to, to see the kind of people that you surround yourself with because you can't, uh, you can't uh, have a hard life of balancing and then you have toxic people around you. You're going to die in that <laughs> life. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Especially in this leadership position. I can, mm. The Brenda is talking about being mm. surrounded by women who influence her, mentor her mm. in the right way. Mm. Then it's beneficial because mm. your tribe truly matters. The yes. people you surround yourself with mm. matter. Mm. So, uh, Honorable Brenda, how do you pick and choose to ensure that the, the people that surround you add value to your life and they prioritize your health. They do not bring you down, they will not weigh you down. When you probably want to, sometimes you just want to rant about work. Mm. You want to, you've had a long day and you just need to talk to someone and tell them, yo, <laughs> hey Leo. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, you, how do you pick people who you know that you can trust? Because sometimes mm. you can disclose to someone and then the next day you're all over the news. And you talked yeah. about this and you talked about that. Yeah. So how do you pick and choose people who you know you can trust? Um, you need, okay, what I can say is that uh, you need to pick a mentor, mm -hmm. mentors or rather mentors who are there to impact you positively in your political journey, in your career and in everything. People who are positively advising you, you know, like um, to a human. Yeah. Right now, I can, um, I can go astray. 
there's no need of you to bring down or rather just correct me and tell me Brenda you did wrong this is the right way so such people who impact you positively and show you the right way through the right channels yeah mm. yeah I really and, love uh, that so far so good I'm so proud of the G7 the current G7 the seven female governors and uh, so far so good I've been able to interact with uh, Her Excellency Gladys Wanga and uh, my hometown governor Kawira Mongaza and I must say Kenya is headed somewhere as a country because um, when we steer in that uh, in that direction women are, are taking over and I'm so proud of it and I'm looking forward also and I'm following the steps yeah yes. I really love that because women are MDs women are CEOs they're COOs women are governors yeah. women are presidents yeah do we foresee a Kenyan president who is female because why not hmm. <laughs> <laughs> why yeah. not yeah it is something that is much doable mm -hmm. but looking at the reality of politics in Kenya the the ideal candidate that female candidate has to really have the right because uh, normally nowadays you see we, we have political alignments like yeah. now they form coalitions so it's important for that female uh, candidate to choose the right coalition because the reality is if you stand uh, to vie alone you cannot win yeah. so you've seen uh, in the recent past uh, different parties coming together to form one thing so and then backing up one person so it gives you much strength of reaching out to the people and also just the support base becomes wider yeah. so i think uh, w because we've had Martha Karua's vying last time and yeah, she really impressed the country. Uh, she is a good start because at least she's tried the deputy level. So if she can get a good uh, strategy and just the right team, then I think the Kenya is ready. It's Kenya is ripe. Yeah. 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 And hopefully we can see that, especially starting at the DP position, because I don't mm. think we've seen a Kenyan, uh, we've mm. not seen a, a f female as a DP. Mm. But it's something that we foresee, we hope for, because if mm. our neighbors can do it, yeah. why can't we do it? We can. Okay. We can do it. And I, I'm, I'm believing, first, I think we can, we, we, we'll just look at the US election. Mm. Hopefully, with the numbers that Kamala Harris has been having, mm. there is so much. A positive energy towards mm -hmm. that and I think mm -hmm. once a woman leads the United States of America then the shift will be felt all over because mm -hmm. so many women have been leading like different countries mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of that so do we believe the statement that the future is female um, basically yes I do believe and this is because I uh, maybe just to add on what she said um, it does not necessarily depend on a coalition or the party that you are in for you to be impactful or to be a leader of the nation. Uh, for example, in our county, Kawira being a, a female, the only female who was in the race uh, for the gubernatorial position, we can see she had to beat all the men and she won it. As an with an independent ticket, actually yeah. she's independent. So basically, it does not depend on coalition because right now, when you, when you tend to look at the state of the parties um, in the country, there is uh, some sort of higgy haga here and there. Yeah. Uh, ODMs, it's sleeping. Mm. Uh, kuna kuna ma shift eh, nyingi. Mambo ina <laughs> We are not sure what's happening. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. So you can basically join a party thinking that um, I'm joining ODM so that mm. maybe uh, I can win a certain position and then you end up losing because what I can say is that uh, apparently the Kenyan politics are changing not like they uh, are. before when um, you, you could hear that um, we are not choosing this leader because he or she is in UDA or he or she is uh, supporting Jubilee he or she is in bus or whichever party I think the mentality it keeps on changing with time yeah like people believe that we're choosing a leader for he or she uh, for whom he or she is not basically because of the party because yeah now when we say that we're choosing a person because of the coalition or because of the party then that's where everybody goes from that's where everything now goes south yeah mm -hmm. it's, yeah. About, so the it's about the individual's competence so yeah there's so many people who, whom I think they can make good leaders 
whether with a party or not, whether yeah. with a coalition yeah. or not. I love that. Yes. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful note for us to yes. end it on. I, I'm mm. hating that the time is not on our side. Mm. <laughs> but I think that's a wonderful, wonderful place to end it at. Mm. It's about your individual competence. It's about mm. your skill, your experience, what you have to offer. And that's where we're heading at with this current generation. And we have the numbers. Mm. We, we make up more than, I think... Um, at 40 something, more than 45% of yes. the, the voters mm -hmm. in Kenya. So that's mm -hmm. a very positive thing. And I think we can look forward to positive changes in the leadership space, particularly mm -hmm. with women. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll end it there. Um, uh, I don't know if I have time to give you shout outs, but maybe I can just <laughs> let you know, mm -hmm. you can look for the Young Women Leaders Connect. Yes, yeah to connect with both of our guests. They are mm -hmm. both uh, part of that uh, very wonderful organization. You can reach out to them if you want to be a member, if you want uh, mentorship. And it's a wonderful, wonderful space for you to engage with impactful, powerful, powerful women. That's it for today. Women can lead, and they can lead very, very well. Unfortunately, time is not on our side, so I can't mm -hmm. sample your comments. But thank you so much for watching us. Thank you for taking your time to Watch the entire program. I'll catch you guys next week. Same time every single Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. A repeat of this will air tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. And we will have this episode up on YouTube so you can catch it then. I'll see you guys next week. I hope you have a lovely evening. And yeah, cheers. <laughs>